Hey there, it's Ben Housel here. And here in this tutorial, we're gonna be having a look at how we animate images in Final Cut Pro 10. Now this is really useful if you need to bring images to life to help tell a story for a documentary. And basically we're gonna be using uh, the built-in plugins um, for all of this tutorial. We're gonna be having a look at how we animate the images, how we use masks to blend them together, and then also how we use some of the generators to kind of really bring images to life uh, and kind of pull out some of the detail in those images. Now, if you like these kinds of tips and tricks and tutorials, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button. Um, and this video is sponsored by FX Factory, so be sure to go and check them out. Uh, they have a lot of very cool plugins. But without further ado, let's have a look at how we animate images in Final Cut Pro 10 using only the built-in plugins. So let's dive into Final Cut Pro and have a look at how we bring these image layers uh, together to create this kind of animated background um, that we're looking at here. So the animated iPhone um, is not what we're going to be looking at in this tutorial. We're just going to be using the built-in Final Cut Pro plugins um, to create this kind of animated layered images that blend together and also that create space on the right-hand side um, for us to add other elements like the iPhone. So let's dive in and have a breakdown of what we've got here. So essentially we've got two different layers here uh, and on each of these layers we've got a couple of different effects. One is the Ken Burns effect to kind of give that disjointed movement of those two images and the other is a shape mask um, that allows to blend one image into the other. Now there's a few different ways in which you can do this um, using different masking tools. Uh, we're gonna have a look at the, the shape mask in this tutorial. And then we have another layer, um, which is a generator um, built into Final Cut Pro that has these drifting shapes uh, kind of moving across your images, but just helps to kind of give it a little bit of life and a little bit of animation. So we are gonna jump into a brand new project here to set this up. So we'll go to File, New and Project. And we'll call our new project Layered Images. And we'll keep it at 1080p, 1920 by 1080, and click OK. So basically, the first thing we want to do is grab the two images that we're going to be using. So we have our background image here. And we'll drag this down to the timeline. And then once we've done that, I'm just going to do Shift and Z. This is 10 second long uh, still image and we'll just let that fill the, the whole timeline by zooming in on it. And then we'll grab the image of our couple here, uh, looking at the phone. Um, and this is kind of hinting at a future tutorial I'm gonna be doing, looking at the OSM iPhone application that you can get from FX Factory. Um, but right now we're working just with plugins within Final Cut Pro 10. So basically what we wanna do is blend these two images together. Now, if you use Photoshop or anything like that, you may have used mask layers um, to kind of blend two images together. We'll basically fade one image to transparency, which is essentially what we're doing here. So I'm gonna select this image and we are gonna come across to our effects on the right-hand side. And what we're looking for in here is the mask effects, okay? So we have things like the draw mask, the graduated mask, the image mask, and you can see as I hover over each of these, we get a different uh, kind of mask that we can use to blend these two images together. So I'm gonna grab the, the shape mask here and we'll drag this onto our image. And basically you can see straight away um, we get this blend of those two images. Um, we've got these two red lines um, outside of our image. Um, if we move the outer one, it's gonna increase the amount of fade that we have. If we move the inner one, it's gonna change the size or kind of proportions of our shape. Now I wanna make this uh, kind of more oval. So I'm basically gonna pull in this white circle on the top left um, so that we kind of make that more of an oval shape. And the subject is really this young girl looking at her phone um, and then the guy there just looking down can be blurred out a bit more. So basically we're blending these two images by having this fade out um, across the edge. Now one thing that we'll note in the background is that we have this black bar across on the left hand side. Now as soon as we come to our Ken Burns effect which we're going to do using the crop option here. So if we bring up crop and then switch this to Ken Burns, you'll see that we've got a zoom out um, of that. So basically it's starting zoomed in and then we're moving further away from that kind of grungy, rusty wall type surface. So we'll hit done here. And so basically now you'll see that the wall moves away from these two people, kind of gives it a nice animated effect. Now, if I come to this layer, I'm gonna add the crop um, at Ken Burns again. And basically I want this one to zoom in so you can see it's starting wide and zooming in and we're going to make sure it centers on the zoom in on this person here and we'll hit done and so basically now you can see we get this nice kind of juxtaposition of one image zooming out and one image zooming in which gives this very cool animated effect 
Now I want to move my image across the left a little bit. I'm going to come and do that up in the inspector where I have my shape mask and come to position. And we're just going to drag the X position to the left. So we kind of leave these guys hang off to the left here. And that is essentially the kind of main part or one of the main parts of this animation, kind of bringing this image to life. So I'm just going to do Shift and Z again so we can kind of zoom to fit. And now I'm going to come up to my generators. And, and this has this last little bit of animating these layered images. So I'm going to come to my generators and I'm going to close up my title options here. And then we're going to come down to the backgrounds here. And basically I'm looking for this drifting generator. And you can see at the moment it's set to these kind of bubbles. I'm going to drag this down to my timeline. And now you can see we have these little bubbles hovering over our image. So I don't want this kind of 3D bubble here. What I'm looking for, um, and if we come up to the inspector on the top right, you can see we've got options for this shape. We're going to change this to dust. And so what you'll see when I play this back now is that we have just these little bits of dust kind of floating along the image, but they're quite slow at the moment. So I'm going to increase the, the number of these. So you can see we can wind this up to 10 just so we can really see what's happening here. I can increase or decrease the scale of these. So I'm just going to drop these down a little bit. And then we can also change the speed at which they're playing back. So we get a little bit more movement on screen there. And we've also got options for the opacity. So we can dip these down so we can see more of the image behind. Um, and we can also increase the blur of these as well. So we have a little bit more of a blur as we kind of move through. So you can see we're basically getting these little floating bits of dust over the top of our image. Now I find that they have a little bit sometimes two darker edges. Um, so I'm going to come to my layer blend modes um, underneath my video options here and change the blend mode to, to screen, um, which is just going to leave away those darker edges and we're just getting that kind of light overlay of this. So if we play this through now, you can see we've just got these nice kind of floating shapes over the top of our image, which is just helping to kind of give that sense of animation um, of our image. We can also just randomize these a little bit more. And the last thing I want to do is just avoid any of those bits of fluff kind of hovering over the faces. So I'm going to add, a, actually add a mask to this layer as well. So I'm going to add a shape mask. Okay, so you can see we've got that same shape mask. And this time, what we're going to do is make this an oval and kind of position it around the head here. And then with that layer mask, I'm going to come to my video options and I'm going to invert it. So basically any of these bits of dust and stuff like that that are floating around aren't going to float over the face here. So we're kind of focusing in on that subject. So you can see now that as we play this through, we get this nice motion. We get these little bits of animation in there as well. And then we're ready really to kind of add that more advanced animation um, of the phone over the top here. So we'll just shorten this up at the beginning a bit. So basically I'm leaving a second or two at the beginning for the animation of that phone onto the screen. And if I come back to my previous animation, we can just grab the animation here, copy it and come ahead. And now if we paste this on top, we can play this through. So you can see we get this nice animation at the beginning here and we just need to add a little cross dissolve here. So I'm going to select the beginning of my clip and hold down command and tap T. Cross dissolve is my default transition. So basically now I can offset these a little bit. So you can see now we've got the animation of the phone at the beginning and we can actually add a little cross dissolve here too. And then we move into this animation where they're looking at the phone and texting away. So you can see here with these kind of few simple animation techniques, we can bring a really nice level of interest to the different images that we have on screen. So I hope this is useful for you. Um, if you're thinking about layering up graphics or adding animated elements to video in Final Cut Pro 10, hopefully there's some useful techniques in here for you. Um, I hope you enjoy the tutorial. If you do have any questions, uh, then leave them below in the comments. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.